Hello, so the purpose of this video today is to really ensure that your child is secure when counting to at least 10, but maybe even to 20. The idea is that we want to start this addition journey on a very good foundation where your child is actually secure in relating those numbers to objects and actually those counting skills have developed. So we're going to start with very practical, fun activities that you can just do with your child using objects that you have around the house. And what we want to do is just really make it as practical and as interactive as we possibly can. So we're going to start very, very simply and we're going to start with basic counting of objects. You want to choose something that your child likes to play with. So we like building rocks and we like moshy monsters in our house. So that's what we are actually going to use. The main thing I'd like to say here is that's really important is that you really want to ask, actually get your child to touch the objects or to move them as they count because you want to ensure that your child understands that one-to-one -one correlation that objects actually relate to a number and they're not just counting randomly. So I'm going to ask James, my son, to be our helper for the day. Is that okay? Say hello. Hello. And I'm going to ask you, James, to do some counting, if you wouldn't mind. Yes. So do you think you could count these objects yes. for me? Yes. Okay, off you go. One. Two, three, four, five. So as you can see, James is able to move those objects to a different location. So he's really starting to relate the idea that this object actually relates to the number one, this object really relates to the number two, and he's got that firm understanding that these objects actually do correlate and they relate to each other. So what we're going to do then is we want to then, once you've secured, you can play lots of games like that with lots of different objects. Once you've really secured, the fact that your child can count, you want to then move on to starting to show them those numbers and those symbols that actually represent um, those numbers. And what I've got here is just a very, very basic number line with the numbers on it. And what I'm now going to ask James to do is I'm going to ask him to actually relate those objects to numbers now. So we're going to think about that correlation, the, the one to one correlation, now to actually relating that to the symbol as well. So James, I'm going to ask you, do you think you can put some objects and put them on the number? Yes. Okay, off you go. One, two, three, four, five. Oh dear, does one go there? Ah, no. perfect. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, you want to be encouraging your child, that was very good, to put those numbers, those objects actually on the number. So again, they're starting to see that those numbers relate to those that amount of objects. And as you can see, James was about to make a mistake. Don't feel that you can't correct your child, but do it in a nice, fun way where they don't feel that, that you're criticising them. So again, what we want to do then is then, once you've done that, you want to start maybe playing some games with your child just to make it a little bit more interactive, to make it a little bit more exciting. And things like bingo are perfect for that. Again, this is something that I have just drawn up very, very quickly. And it's just some little ladybirds with different numbers on there, just with a visual representation of the numbers. And the basic idea is that you give your child a little number card you call out some numbers and they have to find that number on the board and of course when they get to the end they shout out bingo and they're the winner. So we're going to do a little demonstration. Do you think we can do that? Okay James, can you find a ladybird with two spots? Yes. One, two. Good. And do encourage your child to double check. If they just say yes I find two and put their counter on, actually take it off and say to them can you count, can you make sure so that you are ensuring that your child does really get that full understanding. James, do you think you could find a ladybird with three spots? Yes! One, two, three. Brilliant, good boy. Do you think you could find a ladybird with one spot? No! Okay, and so on and so forth until they get to the end when they're going to shout... Bingo! Exactly, very good. This, again, can be used for loads of different um, activities. You could use this card even just for some matching activities. 
So what you could do is just get some cards that match those numbers and hide them around the house and have a little hunt around for them and do it, time it or do it within a certain time or you have to find them before your child. And again, that's a really good way of just playing little interactive games and actually getting your child up and moving as well. You could even have a little treasure hunt around the house. We particularly love this in our house where you say you have to find three cars, five suites, seven squares, ten circles. And again, you can start to then bring in the other elements of maths by introducing shapes and colours and things like that as well. So you're starting to hit those different um different aspects of maths but the, really the main purpose of this idea of this video is so that you have fun with your child your child is developing that independence they're developing that confidence in mathematics and also that it, you can be sure that they know that they can count to 10 and that you can then start to move on to the next step